What's your capacity here? You're here as an author, not as a, a union baron. Uh, that that's right? absolutely right, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. All the pressures are lifted off me. I can basically say what I like without worrying too much about who I'm accountable to. So I'm enjoying doing the rounds. I mean, your successor hasn't come here. Is that a mistake, do you think? Uh, no, Sharon intends to do things differently in the political arena. Anyone who thinks she's not political would be making a mistake. She wants to drive politics through the workplace and through the communities. And currently she's engaged in, I think we've got something like 20 strikes in Unite. And she's visiting all of those picket lines. So no, she'll do things her way. But does that mean that, that you know, after your era of intense political cooperation, you're right about a lot of this, that, you know, the unions are stepping back and concentrating more on bread and butter issues for their members? I wouldn't say stepping back. I think it's simply that she wants to do it differently. Um, it's right that she stamps her mark on Unite. I've been around a long time. Yeah, she wasn't and, your choice either. Was uh, she? Well, she was. My choice was to defeat uh, Jared Coyne. And I didn't mind whether it was Sharon or Steve Turner who did it. And, I gave her the biggest hug she's ever had when she defeated yeah, the coin. Yeah, you thought you stopped out of the office rather quickly. Yeah, that's not true. I'm still going in the office every single day. That was Joe Pike telling lies again. Um, I, I'm in the office every day. I'll probably be physically leaving uh, my office at the end of October. Yeah. But no, Sharon's very close to me. She's a force of nature and she's going to do great. Now, what's your solution or argument about, about lorry drivers? I mean, well, in your union, you have lorry drivers. What, 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 what is the problem in your view? Well, unfortunately at the moment, and I agree with everything that John McDonnell has just said in your clip, Keir was elected on a particular 10 pledges a platform. He said he would make the moral case for socialism, but above everything else, he said he wanted unity in the party. I spoke to him for one and a half hours the day before he was elected. We knew he was going to be elected. And I told him, if you want unity, Keir, you can have it. Everybody is desperate for unity in the party because for five years, Jeremy's getting, been getting knifed in the back. And he said, above everything else, that's what he would do. Well, look how that's turned out. We've got the most disunited party we've had for a long time. I was, I was asking you about the lorry driver's situation. Sorry, oh, sorry. You, you the can't, lorry... can't hear, perhaps. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. The, the lorry driver's situation, it's typical to the government being found out again. We've been saying for a long time, HGV drivers are skilled workers. Their rates of pay, instead of being driven down uh, by cheap labour, need to be raised. Well, that's the issue. I mean, do you think we should be opening up to European drivers again? Well, the, they've got themselves in a mess because, of course, everybody knew as soon as uh, Brexit was triggered that there would be a huge shortage within this area. We raised with the government, please do something, invest in skills, otherwise we're going to find ourselves in some difficulty. Unfortunately, they didn't listen. And so now we're in this ridiculous situation where if there was proper investments, of course British local workers could take up the jobs that are desperately needed. I mean, it's an interesting question. I mean, you're a socialist, you're an internationalist to a certain extent. So do we want a free labour market where people can come in and fill vacancies on building sites? Or only, if, only, Adam, if there is proper labour market regulations. You see, the truth of the matter is, and it's not migrant workers, folks, they're not to blame for anything, but greedy bosses have used migrant labour to drive down uh, rates yeah. of pay in terms of conditions. Not the workers' fault, the greedy, greedy bosses. And what we should have, and what we would have had with a Labour government, is labour market regulations to protect all workers. That way we don't get a race to the bottom society, we have a race uh, for the job uh, society. Looking back at your time, and again you write about it, do you feel that at any point you ever got too mighty, sort of almost abused your position and, your, and the resources no, I don't of, think uh, so. of the union? No, for... I don't think so. I hope not. I mean, obviously, people will make their own judgments. But I was the leader of the most powerful and the most influential union in uh, the UK and Ireland. It's my job to exert that influence on behalf but of I our mean, members. There is this image, and you see it in the papers all the time, that, you know, 
people, union barons live high on the hog off the back of their members. Is, yeah, is well, I, I, I don't know quite what living high on the hog means. All I know is that, of course, the media always want a bogeyman. I fill that space for a period of time. But my everything I did was to make certain that my members and the policies of my union uh, were influential, not just with the Labour Party, where, of course, we are the largest affiliates, but also with governments. You know, I've met with many government ministers to try to persuade them, and with some of those government ministers, we did some good work. And, and um, as a union baron, would you like to be a real baron, member of the House of Lords? No, that won't happen. I can state that quite categorically. I doubt very much anybody would offer it me, but I say... It hasn't been offered so no, far. No, it hasn't. And because, I, I mean, a lot of your predecessors I've interviewed... Uh, well, I, I, I certainly would be going into the House of Lords.